Good afternoon, friends. Steve Emberton here with Israeli News Live. And we have again with us Brother Anthony uh, from Daily Excellence. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate uh, Anthony's work that he does on his program. And uh, so it is a delight to have him back here again today. So I want to welcome you, Brother Anthony. And if you can just share with people real quick how they can reach out, contact you and be able to follow the work you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, for starters, uh, thank you so much, uh, Steve, for uh, having me over here on uh, Israeli News Live and uh, for uh, letting me be here. And so it's always an honor to come over and uh, collab with you and just kind of see where things are going to go. But yeah, and anyone who uh, wants to follow our channel, we have several uh, ways you can do that. We're on uh, YouTube, Daily Excellence, uh, but we also have backup platforms um, that we um upload to as well. You can follow us over on Rumble and on our Patreon page. Uh, all of our Patreon videos are free to watch. Um, and so you can check those out. Just make sure that you have a profile over there. And then of course we're on Twitter. You can follow us there. We do a lot of, we do our lives over on Twitter as well. So um, a lot of different places you can follow us uh, different ways that you can help us out with uh, what we got going on. And so, yeah, not too Pretty easy to find. Not too many channels called Daily Excellence out there. <laughs> there you go. I, I do encourage, I know that your Patreon platform uh, is free for anyone, but it is also another way people can support the work you do. So I want to encourage you, uh, if you're listening, definitely subscribe to uh, uh, Anthony's Patreon channel there. Uh, like I said, I, I really appreciate the soundness uh, of his views, and I appreciate the fact that he's a believer. Uh, and uh, all, all of that combined together in the time frame the world we're living in today is so needful. So thank you, Brother Anthony, for your faithfulness and what you do in the world for, for Jesus Christ, for his kingdom, and also for helping people to know what's going on in the world. No, thank you very much. All right, let's get right into it, Brother Anthony. We are we're going to cover three subjects tonight. We're going to talk about uh, Israel, Iran, the situation that's going on there. We're going to be talking about uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia, the war that's happening there that could easily spiral out of control. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we're going to get into this economic troubles that the banks have been having. I know there's a lot of nervousness with people going on right now. There's a lot of different folks out there, people I know personally um, you know, that, that are telling people, take all your money out of the bank, it's all going to collapse and stuff. And, and granted, we know that it's, it's very bad. I mean, it's, they are going towards a new world order. They're getting mm -hmm. their ducks in a row. All of that's going to happen. Uh, but to know what the right thing is to do, I can't say that I'm the guy for that, but we're going to talk about that too, uh, tonight. So let's get right with it with Israel, Iran, brother Anthony, I guess, as you know, uh, we are very much in a very real possibility of of um, of Israel doing a strike on Iran mm -hmm. uh, and a preemptive strike. The United States, I do know from uh, from the Israeli advisor to the president that the United <clears throat> States will stand with Israel in a preemptive strike. They are following Trump's plan that he laid out uh, when he was president before. Uh, that's why all the military drills, everything that have happened with Israel more recently, they have been on that note, that key there. And uh, and so it's just a matter of time from what I can see that Israel is going to do this. Let me have you weigh in on these issues here, Anthony. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. Um, there's actually a couple different things about what you just said there that I find uh, pretty interesting. I was over here writing it down. So if you see me looking down, it's not because I'm not paying attention. I'm I'm jotting notes for myself. Uh, two of them is is one that the United States would even support, uh, and this is just my personal opinion. Uh, but that the United States would support a first strike when just a few years ago uh, we were trying to do everything and anything to make sure we didn't do that. Uh, the secondly, to follow Trump's plan. That's also something I find extremely. Uh, interesting considering that we're, you know, allegedly in the process of getting ready to criminally indict the guy. Uh, and so, you know, it kind of brings me to a conclusion on this. The, or the reason why we would be doing this is because we know that Iran uh, has ties to Russia and we're in a cold war with Russia and, and allegedly and right now. And so, um, you know, Russia has been getting uh, weapons 
I sent in, bought in from China. I think it was what over a hundred strike drones they received. Uh, we just had an incident. It was yesterday, I think, uh, with one of our drones uh, getting uh, taken out by an aircraft in Russia. Uh, they were getting upset that we were getting too close to the airspace, even though it was an international uh, airspace when it happened. Our drone ended up going down in the Black Sea. And so, you know, we see things just kind of ratcheting up. And so it's kind of like if we can get Israel in my, and this is just my personal opinion, I don't have any intel, but it feels like if that we can just get Israel to do a preemptive strike on our, Iran, then it's kind of like the United States' way of, you know, hit slapping Russia in the face in a backdoor kind of sense. Uh, that's kind of what I feel about. I don't really, I don't, I really don't get the feeling that, that we care so much about what really happens with uh, Israel and, our, and Iran too much. But I think we're going to use Israel as a proxy to really give it to the Russians is my personal opinion. That's that is a very interesting thought as well, and uh, of course in Israel there's about two million Russians that are uh, Jewish that live inside the country, and uh, many of them of course are secular Jews, and of course the current situation in Israel that Netanyahu is doing uh, is affecting them as well. Uh, as I'm watching the situation and this. Uh, I know that Israel has been very cautious when it comes to this preemptive strike, which some people may realize that there's something to that. Um, I mean, I know that they are a nuclear power. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, uh, Mike from around the world mentioned that, uh, I think on Brother uh, Paul's program recently, uh, that they have nuclear weapons. Uh, I've been saying it for more than a decade. Uh, that was one, one of the reasons I started that was because a good friend of mine interviewed one of the scientists from uh, Iran who had defected to the United States, who had said that they had nuclear weapons uh, and had them for quite some time. I know from uh, from Obama's days in power, we actually gave them bunker busters, which are nuclear warhead uh, bombs that can go beneath the ground and, and, and explode and, and cause a lot of havoc. So when Israel is being very cautious over time and yet nothing else still keeps sounding the drum beats of uh you know we got to do a first strike on on iran because they might get nuclear weapons you can't help but wonder there's more to it now mm -hmm. iran is uh uh working on getting the uh, uh the hypersonic missile uh launching system they've already got from China, they got the, uh, the I've, I don't know exactly what it's called, but I do know what it is. They have the technology that was given to them by the Chinese that causes a missile to disappear once launched mm -hmm. and only reappears when it strikes. Uh, Israel knows it. We know it. We know it because when they were launching strikes in Saudi Arabia, the uh, the uh, our our missile defense shield could not knock it down, and couldn't even detect it, and yet Trump was saying, "Well, the, the Saudis just don't know how to use our our system." We knew better when we when when Soleimani was taken out, which is actually taken out by the Israelis, not by the United States. It's just the United States took responsibility so that Iran would not strike Israel. But when Soleimani was taken out. Um, the retaliation that was done was an, was an attack on our bases there. And again, we had no way to knock the missiles down. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember the, uh, I think it's the Philadelphia experiment in 1940s, that time frame there, Brother Anthony, just to bring you and the people up to speed that are listening. Uh, we had allegedly, and there's been several movies made about it. I know it's for a fact, but allegedly most people would think we made a ship disappear, reappear in another place somewhere else and then it was brought back again sailors were trapped in the hull of the ship when it came back really ended up being a mess uh all of that was really true mm -hmm. every sailor that participated in this uh ended up in an insane asylum if they lived it really scrambled the brains uh of these of these people so it it, it caused a lot of problems we supposedly 
stopped doing the program, never did it again, which was all a lie. We kept working on it until we perfected it. Somehow or another, the Chinese ended up with the technology. Uh, they eventually gave it to the Iranians. And so the Iranians, even when they launched this missile to the Demona power plant over in Israel, uh, Israel did not detect it again, and it nearly hit the power plant. And of course, the Israelis played it down saying it was an accident. They were trying to shoot it, uh, shoot it uh, something else, but they, the missile went mm -hmm. off course and came near the Demona <clears throat> power plant. Are you talking about the cloaking device? Uh, yeah, it is, it, is, it is a cloaking type of device on there mm -hmm. is what it is. But technically what happens, that missile literally, when they launch it, it disappears. Mm -hmm. you, it, goes to, it goes to the ether is what it does. You can't see it. And then when it reappears, it's right before it hits its target and you can't stop it. So it's not that Iran doesn't ha have the delivery system already. Uh, but even like Mike mentioned, he said that the earthquakes that were going on were around where the bases were in Turkey, which would help knock down any missiles that Iran could shoot off, etc. Um, and we do know that not only does uh, Russia have that technology, Israel has the technology, China and America all have the technology to create earthquakes. I don't know if there's anybody else that has that technology, but uh, it's basically though what I, I guess what I'm getting at right here, Israel has to use a lot of caution because Iran already has amazing technology. So if they go in there and make a strike and they mess up, it's going to be havoc for Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I know. And a couple of things, too, uh, that, I, that I was thinking about, you know, I, I agree with you. You know, my personal opinion has has always been, I think Iran already has uh, nuclear weapons. I think they've had them for a long time. Uh, one of the things that I had brought up on my channel, too, is, you know, these dates – uh, keep getting thrown around, you know, oh, uh, Iran's got uh, 60 days and they'll have a nuclear we weapon. And then it goes to being, oh, in 10 days. And then the next week it's 15 days. I mean, it's like going to Vegas and getting, you know, playing craps and just seeing, you know, what number is going to roll out on how many days they're going to have it. But I think they've always had it. Uh, they've been fully uh, stocked with them. And I think they've, I think they've got them on the launchers ready to go. My personal opinion uh, I did want to ask you a question, though, because, um, you know, we, we're talking, you know, we're talking about a, a potential first strike and, you know, very kind of kind of unusual that we're letting that that we're kind of letting that happen. Uh, but it seemed like I remember uh, somebody saying maybe it was Mike from COT that said this, but the reason why that nobody has really allowed up until this point that we're at anyway, um, a strike on Iran is that doesn't the country have certain areas that uh, underground, if hit, it releases a nuclear discharge? And this is why nobody's ever really wanted to mess with this country up until up until now. Is that because that's kind of kind of been my thought process on this as to why we've never seen a first strike um, with anyone against uh, Iran? Have you ever heard of that? That part I have not. I do know that when President Trump was looking at doing a first strike before leaving office uh, in December, um, when that all was going down then, the, uh, the advisor to Israel uh, reached out to me and uh, because I have very good intelligence on Iran. And, uh, and they knew that. And so they asked me if I could get any information, any intel uh, from Iran on what Iran's position was, knowing that they were facing a possible strike on the country. And uh, so I did. I reached out to uh, one source that I have in Iran, and uh, and they did some checking. Uh, and Iran gave me a, a, an official behind closed doors a message for President Trump. And I relate it. And uh, that message was, uh, we know you're planning on doing a first strike. We realize that it'll be devastating, but we want you to know also, if you do not take us out within 48 hours, we will have every single one of our allies we have already moved our missiles and our missile technology has been given to all of our allies throughout the Middle East. 
And although our communications would be destroyed, they already know what to do. Now, what that meant was they were going to attack Israel. Mm -hmm. But the way they told me, though, was to make sure that the president's intel knew that the information was accurate. So they said that we transported all of our weapons by air, with the exception of the Houthi rebels. Uh, the weapons we transferred to them was by ground, and we did use the Jordanian country to do so. And they also have a nuclear device at their disposal at their particular facility. Um, I relayed that information back. It wasn't until after the election had come and gone that, uh, that later I found out that President Trump, in part, one of the reasons why he did not authorize that first strike was because the intel was extremely accurate. They knew it was accurate, and their concern was the nuclear device that the Houthi rebels had and the ability to actually launch it and hit Israel with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I remember. Oh, I remember oh there was one other thing, that. too, and I meant to say this. I apologize, Brother Anthony. Um, one of the other serious issues, too, which kind of goes along with what you're saying there, is that they told me that they knew that Iran, all of their underground facilities were encased in granite because that country is naturally the stone in the ground is granite. Mm -hmm. um, and that was another issue as well. Trump knew that uh, even with our bunker busters, being able to within the 48 hour period to be able to penetrate and destroy all of Iran's capabilities militarily in 48 hours was nearly impossible. So that was the other issue as well. Even though they they could they could calculate the risk of the other nations having their weapons, uh, they did feel certain that they would never be able to fully destroy all of these granite bunkers. <clears throat> yeah, I um, uh, you know, I've, I've told people on our channel that uh, if anything goes down between uh, you know Israel and Iran, that it's going to be that's going to be huge you know uh it's gonna kind of put it's definitely for sure gonna put russia and uh the whole ukraine thing on the black on the back burner because i mean once israel goes goes into it they're gonna go all the way you know uh and i don't think they're gonna let up especially with uh who they've got in charge over there right now and so uh it's i would you know i would just advise everybody that's watching you really keep your eyes on what's going on between those two countries um, because that could really be the ignition point that's just going to set everything off as well. Um, you know, you're you're starting to get into the prophecy of uh, Ezekiel 38, 39 uh, between between what the actions that would go on between uh, Israel and Iran, and you know the potential there of uh, nuclear weapons being used. Uh, is is definitely a real possibility, uh, just as we've already stated, you know, that, you know, I personally think that they already, that they have it and it's on the launch pad, you know, uh, I don't have any proof of it, but just, you know, when you look at the propaganda and the runaround that you get, uh, anytime the idea of, you know, a nuke is being brought up, um, you know, you can get so many different timetables and, you know, that to me is just proof that they already have it. And so there's no, nobody's going to come out and really admit it until you see it on television being used somewhere. And then, you know, Oh, by the way, I guess they had them. So. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Moving on over, let's go into Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, Russia. We know uh, Anthony, uh, I guess getting close to a week ago now, Russia used again their super uh, hypersonic missiles. I, I believe it was six of those they sent mm -hmm. in uh, on a strike. Of, I think it's some 80 something missiles in total were used throughout the entire uh, country of Ukraine. And I've been told over and over and over that Ukraine uh, is going to fall. They cannot survive the onslaught. Uh, even though we are sending in tanks, uh, the French, the Germans, et cetera. Russia is only waiting to see uh, because we know that there's no time to train the Ukrainians on how to use this equipment. Uh, they are going to be using, I already know the purchase order was made for, for using the, um, the spent uranium uh, shells uh, in this battle. Not that they're fully equipped with that, but they will have that at their option mm -hmm. because of the Terminator tanks that the Russians have uh, are very dangerous. And so, 
everything that I'm hearing is that this could easily by November, October, November of this year, we could see that this war is going to leave Ukraine and end up spreading throughout Europe. Uh, Germany specifically would end up being targeted. And I think that they're, what they're looking at is that once the German tanks are on the battlefield, for which they'll be first, and they use any of these uh, um, spent uh, uranium shells, we're going to end up uh, seeing that this is going to get really nasty and Russia is going to retaliate at that point. Uh, what what is, what are you seeing when you're looking at all of this? Uh, I see I see several different things. Uh, you know, going back to the first part you mentioned about the Ukraine uh, potentially, you know, not making it through, which I, I you know I I tend to agree with you on this. Uh, and I can think um, the statement I'm about to make. I'm I'm already know I'm going to get some emails from some folks. <laughs> They're not going to agree with what I'm about to tell you, um, but. You know, up until this point, up until recently, Ukraine's been and NATO really have been playing with the B team uh, over in Russia, uh, just in my personal opinion. Um, you know, the Russians, I don't think, or, or I let me rephrase, I don't think Putin is as dumb as he appears to be. Um, you know, he, he's a strategic thinker. He's part, he was part of the old regime, you know, uh, KJB, whatever it is. Uh, so he knows a little bit of what he's doing. And I think right now we're coming to a place where we're, we're getting ready to see the A team come out. Uh, that means you're about to see the, the real weaponry that they have. You know, if you, when you, when this whole thing started and it looked like Ukraine was taking ground, uh, you know, taking some ground back that the Russians had taken in. One of the things that I noticed when I was seeing a lot of the footage on television, I was like, man, the tanks look old. I'm like, they're using old equipment. You know, uh, the weaponry was old. Uh, it just, everything they used was old and they couldn't, they had a hard time getting their stuff to come across the border. I remember like the 40 mile long train of, of, uh, items that uh, they had that couldn't, that couldn't make it across the border. And at the time, you know, the news media really played off of that was, and was really talking about how weak Russia is and all these things. And the next thing, you know, um, we've got Ukraine asking for money from everyone, you know, and I think we've spent what, almost a trillion dollars now on this war. Uh, we, we spent a lot of money so far and now it's not working. Uh, that tells me the Russians are using something. Uh, they're able to come either, either Zelensky is selling our weapons in the black market and making a bundle. Um, you know, and that's just me being hypothetical or the Russians ha are able to, uh, fend off anything that NATO and the United States is sending to them. But now we're starting to see the hypersonics. Uh, we're, we're beginning to see some of the technology that Russia has. And when that was hypersonics came out, uh, everybody kind of took a step back for a second. Like, Whoa, where did this guy come from? You know, it's like that. It's like having that basketball or football team that did terrible all year long. And then all of a sudden this, this guy has been sitting down on the bench shows up and ends up being like, the hero, you know, and everyone's like, oh man, wh wh where where you been? You know, that's kind of what's happening right now. And so people are taking note. And now, you know, like you just mentioned, we got the tanks showing up, you know, Germany sent their tanks in, we've sent ours in, uh, you know, Poland's definitely worried about things. They, they've got their military on alert and, and uh, it's starting to look like World War II, uh, you know, s scenes popping up with all the little barricades showing up on the borders and things like that. Uh, so, you know, you got the A team starting to show up and get ready to play. There's also the economic aspect of this. And I think this war really, uh, could have already been over with, uh, if handled differently. Um, uh, you know, and I think we mentioned this on another broadcast we've had, there's been many opportunities of peace on both sides and the United States did not allegedly, I should say, the United States allegedly did not want peace. Uh, they told uh, Ukraine allegedly that no, we're funding this thing. You're not. You're not going to the table. Um, and so there seems to be another aspect of this. And you know, it's kind of like follow the money. We're spending a lot of money. We're depleting a lot of resources, uh, and we are, we're blaming a lot of our problems now on what happened in 2020, and now what's happening with this, uh, you know, particular effort going on between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, we're blaming our shortages on what's happening. Uh, we're blaming the inflation 
on what's happening. And so it's kind of like this whole thing's also been a really good scapegoat for the United States. It's also weakening our position around the world, too. And so uh, this whole Russia Ukraine thing, it's got a lot of political uh, issues. It's a lot of political things going on with it. It's got a lot of economical issues for us. And then, of course, you know, you've got Russia who's been backed in the corner like a scalded uh, uh, dog and is now being forced to have to bark and attack because it's got nowhere else to go. And so, um, you know, I, I just see a lot of different fronts, but no matter how you look at it, the end result is not going to be good. Uh, I think the opportunity for peace uh, has probably passed and it's, it's just going to be a, a very nasty outcome in the future. And I guess the question is, is, you know, when is that out outcome going to come? Is it going to be, you know, at the end of this year, we, are we going to draw the, draw this thing out? Like, like the Vietnam war, you know, uh, who knows how long this is going to go, you know, uh, but however long it goes, they're going to milk it for all that it's worth. I, I agree 100%. And, um, you know, it's interesting, you brought up Zelensky. And uh, you said, you know, I don't have any proof of this. But you know, you can't help but wonder if he's not selling things on the black market. Uh, we do know that he is. Uh, and that's what's kind of troubling, too, is the fact that the government knows that he's selling it on the black market. Turkey has been one of the largest purchaser of the equipment that he is selling on the black market. Um, so that's kind of an interesting note in itself. In fact, the uh, the interior ministry, when their helicopter went down, one of the reasons that helicopter was taken down was because they were not getting their cut from the sale of military equipment going into Turkey. And they said to Zelensky, you either give us our cut or we're going to expose you. Well, he let it be known real quick, like he can take out whoever he wants. And sure enough, that helicopter went down. It has been stated to me from Washington that it is the most corrupt government on the planet is Ukraine right now. Uh, and that the corruption and the money and all these things that are happening over there is worse than anything you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do believe we're in a very serious situation there. And as you mentioned, too, the economics, it is a good way uh, for uh, the Biden administration to be able to blame all of our economic woes here at home on this war um, and any other war that's going on in the Middle East. And, and worse yet is that uh, I got a list from the government of all the shortages they were anticipating. And in that list that was sent to me, um, it stated on there, whether it be toothpaste or, 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 or cat food, dog food, uh, some of them would say war related, some would say weather related. They even knew what was going to be the cause of the different shortages that we were anticipating. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it, we're really headed in a bad situation, which takes us into the next part of our discussion tonight, uh, Brother Anthony, and that's the economic situation after the collapse of the bank uh, uh, out in California. And uh, I know that uh, Ethan, a good friend of mine, he was saying that there will be no bailouts this time. He said, you will see that they will end up, uh, uh, you know, acquiring all the assets of the bank and they'll nationalize them. So I know you've got a lot of information on this. I'd kind of like to just turn that over to you and let you discuss that. Yeah. I'm going you know. to hit my camera for a second. I got to close the door. The dog opened my door. That's what I was doing a minute ago. <laughs> I kept I kept hearing the dog crying. I'm like, where's the dog at? You know, but it's cold outside too. <laughs> okay, I understand. Yeah, you know, the uh we're we're seeing this domino effect uh with the banks and just to kind of give everybody you know a, a quick overview of, of why this has happened, you have to realize everyone that we haven't really had much uh we haven't been paying a whole lot of in, a lot of interest since 2008. If you guys remember the housing market uh, that busted back then. Uh, you know, we had issues with what was it, Citigroup Financial, Lehman Brothers, um, and some uh, some other other banks. I remember, I remember in '08 because I was working for a security firm or managing a security security firm in Dallas. Uh, I was there the morning when Citigroup laid off all the employees. I was the one that had to escort them out. Uh, so I remember when that happened. But we haven't been paying uh, 
any interest since then. The banks haven't really had to worry about it up until recently. Uh, then the Federal Reserve has just been raising these rates, raising the rates, and they're getting ready to do it again, believe it or not. Uh, and so what happened was you had certain banks that just didn't manage the money very well because banks have to hold back a certain amount of money uh, to prepare for those rates. And so there was a lot of mismanagement that took place. Uh, just rates went up way too quickly. Uh, not that they went high. I mean, compared to the 1980s when what rates were, what, I, I was in diapers at the time, uh, but uh, rates were, what, 15, 20% to get a home at that time. And so we haven't hit that part part yet. Uh, and I say, yeah, cause it's coming. Um, but you know, just a little, you know, four to five, 6% interest rates that we've seen, uh, has, has really done a number. And so that's why these banks, you know, you've got the Silicon Valley bank, you've got Republic, uh, bank, you've got signature bank, uh, had some, has had some issues. Uh, you've got a Wells, uh, Fargo that, you know, potentially had some sort of a software issue. People's paychecks came up missing, um, you know, you, you've got a, a lot of different things that are happening with this. And now, as uh, Stephen just mentioned, the United the government's coming in and they're pretty much taking these banks. You know, they, they they closed out Signature Bank and just bought them out straight out. I mean, they the government owns it now. We'll see what they're going to do with it. Uh, I think was it Republic? First Republic was another one. The government came in and scooped up the part that was failing. Uh, and so that's why we didn't see our stock market crash as hard as it was getting ready to do. Uh, and Signature Bank also, uh, well, I already mentioned that one, um, the Silicon Valley Bank as well, uh, you know, now belongs to the U.S. government. And so, you know, and you've got other banks that are having issues as well, um, you know, that are not doing very, they're not doing good. And so what is all this leading to? Well, if your government owns all the banks, um, then that means that they can do whatever they please with the money. Uh, and so that's kind of the direction we're, we're, we're heading with that. But um, I, I personally think, Stephen, that this is really going to be leading us to the Great Reset because this isn't just an American thing. We're, see we're having problems with banks all over the world now. Uh, we're seeing a collapse in the financial system in Lebanon, where I think right now one U.S. dollar equals 10,000, no, 100,000 lira, as what it equals. We're having problems uh, in France. Matter of fact, I got images going across my screen right now of the of the protest. Uh, they're, they're burning France right now uh, because of the uh, pensions and what Macron is doing over there, uh, pretty much making decisions without any vote from their parliament or how it works there. He pretty much hit the nuclear option today uh, with that. And so major issues going on there. You got South Africa, and that's on on the brink of collapse. Uh, you know, the, the the economic turmoil is taking place worldwide. So it's not just an American issue. This is happening everywhere. We've got problems with the Asian stock market. Uh, look at how many times we had to close. We had to stop and freeze the uh, European markets this week. Um, you know, everything is leading to a complete reset. Uh, of the entire uh, financial monetary system on a global scale, which is going to lead us into uh, for uh, us here in the United States, uh, CBDs. Okay. Um, that's currency, digital currency, cryptocurrency, which by the way, they're trying to take out the cryptocurrency as well because Binance had to shut down in London uh, or the United Kingdom this week, no one could sell, no one could trade, no one could have access to their money, which Binance is a pretty big exchange. Uh, that went out this week as well. I don't know if they got that back up and going. I never, you never see if things get fixed. I've noticed you just know when it gets broken, but you never know if it's going to get fixed. Uh, and so that happened. So they're, you know, they're trying to wipe out cryptocurrency so that they, they can use uh, the actual system um, uh, and to implement the new digital system that's going to come that we're all going to be under. And of course, one of the things too in the United States, if the government continues to buy out all the banks, which uh, I think at, at some point uh, they probably will, um, this is going to lead us to what the universal basic income system. And that's where the government's going to come in and they're going to say, all right, we're going to allow, you know, Say you have a family of five, we're going to allot you this amount of money uh, for the month, okay? And then, you know, if you're a good boy, good girl, you know, and you follow all the guidelines and everything like that, you'll get to keep your money. And if you misbehave, 
uh, you might lose a little bit for a while. Uh, but whatever it is, just know that when this system hits, when uh, these banks fail and you're not able to get your money out of the accounts or anything like that, uh, expect a, a very tra uh, traumatic period uh, for a while where you may not be able to have be able to use cash. You may not be able to use a card. You may not be able to use coin. You may not have any way of purchasing anything. And I'm not talking about the mark of the beast. I'm just talking about there ain't going to be nothing there for a couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden, here comes UBI. Okay. All of a sudden, here comes CBDCs. And they say, right, right. hey, come trade in your money here at the bank for the next 30 days get 100% of your value. If you miss that 30 days, don't worry, you can come back, but now you're only going to get 80% of that value for this 30 days. And if you miss that deadline, don't worry, you can still turn your cash in, but now you're only going to get it for 60% of your value, okay? And so uh, just a lot of different things there. Uh, and uh, so I'll, I'm, I'm going to let you uh, chime in here for a second before I, I uh, bring up my second point here. I think what you're saying is very, very important, uh, uh, Brother Anthony. And I think, too, this is one of the reasons why I've always encouraged people that, you know, when people talk about taking their money out or whatever the case may be, initially it may it may help you to be able to buy things like, for example, if they because if they freeze your cards, you might not be able to get gas, et cetera. Um, I've always been a strong proponent of, Look, you know, put 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 money in commodities to begin with, you know, a bag of rice, uh, you know, beans, things like that, things you could trade with, even things right. that sound crazy, light bulbs. Hey, maybe you have more light bulbs than the neighbor does, you know, because when you start, you know, and not everybody's going to barter things like that. But. The thing is, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to resort to that because they're afraid of the new system. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what to think of the new system. I don't know when it's going to be considered the mark of the beast. Uh, I, I haven't. I don't like to cause panic. I mean, we've had this going on now for for over a century. You know, uh, it was the Social Security number. Then it was the UPC symbol. Then, it, uh, you know, there's been all kinds of ideas of what it is. So if we follow every trend and think this is it, then where's it going to leave us? Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and I don't believe in overstocking either, but I just believe, because I mean, I've overstocked in the times past and a lot of stuff just went bad. I never got around right. to milering everything, that type of thing. Got a lot of things milered too, you know, but at the same time, um, you know, it is going to be what it is. I, I really like the, what you said too about, um, they're going to give you a time period where you'll come in, you might get 100% the first 30 days and 80%, et cetera, et cetera, uh, going on down to where 50% uh, on what your cash may be. Um, I have been told, though, from inside that gold and silver is going to become worthless. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they outlaw it, it I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to be good between people that want to trade in gold or silver, but it's not like you're going to be able to go down and buy something with silver or gold down the road. They're, they're going to make it the worst very difficult. So I've never been big on encouraging people to buy gold and silver. Um, you know, especially gold, my gosh, who could afford gold in the first place, unless you're really wealthy. Uh, that leaves me out of the loop. Uh, right, me too. I've never been able to purchase gold. Never. Um, you know, I do have a little bit of silver. I don't know, maybe 20 pieces of silver, you know, that's it. I think we got to get to the place. So really and truly brother Anthony, it's kind of like Peter, when they were, they were coming along after, after the resurrection, they see the poor guy cripple up on the street and they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I'll give you. I think we're coming to that time. And it's kind of interesting that they said that if you think about it, right? Silver and gold have I none. What kind of system were they living under in their mm -hmm. day? You know, to the point where they didn't have any money but they had faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what we're really going to need. Right. You know, I'm reminded, and uh, I think it was in Ezekiel where they're kind of given, uh, there's a bit of a prophecy toward the end times. And uh, they talk about, let's see, I think it's Ezekiel chapter 7, 19, where they will throw their silver 
uh, they'll throw their silver and gold into the streaks like garbage because of those because those are the two things that would have led you into sin and cannot save you. Uh, but there's also a reference about how it becomes worthless that people just throw it out in the street, which is why I personally never got in uh, to the whole gold and silver thing because I know what Scripture says will happen uh, in the future concerning that it's going to become worthless and people are going to be tossing it out in the streets. And so, and I, and I know some people that. Uh, they sell that stuff and they, and they believe it. And maybe in the short term, it does help. Like, like you said, you know, gold's expensive right now um, to even look at, uh, to even purchase. But there's going to come a time that it's going to become um, useless. It's it's going to lose its value for whatever reason. I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but that is going to take place. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't get into that. You know, and as, as for the argument, you know, what should you do with your money? And this is one of those things that I, I've gone back and forth on myself uh, just because I have some investments uh, that I'm keeping an eye on. You know, and it's kind of like this. You know, you can pull all your money out, stack it in your house. But then if the system goes down, you can't use that cash. And they're and what are you going to do with it? I mean, if, you can, if it becomes worthless, you know, let's just say we have a hyperinflationary uh, situation, which is we, we do, uh, you know, I mean, when you're paying six bucks for a dozen eggs, we got a problem, you know, um, you know, I what was, I went to the, there's a store called five below because the prices used to be five, you know, below $5. Now it's $5 and 55 cents. When you walk in, you know, a 55 cent increase, uh, you know, in, in, some of the inflation and just in that store alone is like, you know, you've seen a 50 to hundred percent inflation adjustment in the stores like that, you know, dollar tree used to be a dollar. Now it's, you know, dollar 25, 24, whatever, you know, that's a 25% inflation adjustment. That's hyperinflation. Okay. So you're, you're going to get into a situation where, uh, which I mean, not getting into, it, we are into it. now it's, you know, are we going to go from inflation to hyperinflation? You know, are we going to be like it was in World War II where, uh, you know, we had to keep changing our currency every single day to keep up with uh, the runaway inflation? Are we going to be putting our cash in and, and barrels and burning them out in the streets because it's worthless? You know, are, you know, uh, you know, are we going to be, <laughs> you know, you may get paid $20 an hour at eight o'clock in the morning. And then, you know, by the time you get off at five, now you're getting paid $200 an hour because of that's how messed up the system is. But that's what, that's what America it's coming to in America. Uh, and it's coming like that to the rest of the world too. That's why they're going to have to change this because the whole planet is being hyperinflated right now. There's no way that that's going to happen. Uh, and I call this, uh, uh Stephen, I, I call this whole system that's happening. And I've said it, it's really been in my spirit the last few weeks uh, but it's called control chaos. That's really what it is. It's just controlled chaos. And they're going and they're allowing this to happen. Scripture told us it would happen. And it's really opening the door for someone, something, entity, whatever, come in and say, I got the answers to all this. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to bring peace. Here's how we're going to jumpstart the economy. Are you on board? So... You know, that's kind of that's kind of the way I I really see that going. But you know, as to what you do with your money, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, you know, Stephen's not a financial advisor. Uh, but you know, my personal opinion, I would say keep enough in your account to keep your lights on for right now, keep the water flowing in your house, keep warm. Uh, and if you have anything extra, you know, uh, pull it out. I think what I think you had a great idea there. Uh, you know. Uh, focus on uh, commodities. Um, hey, buy land, buy real estate. Real estate's a good thing to invest in, even if everything collapses. At least you got somewhere to go and and farm it. Yeah, you know, grow your own stuff. Uh, I would suggest doing something like that. Don't buy gold or silver, but in my personal opinion, um, you know, but you know, um, invest in real estate. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a great idea too, brother, as well. And uh, I mean, look, if the time comes you need silver, you know, maybe Jesus would instruct you to go down and catch the fish and get the coin out of the fish's mouth, right? So, right. <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. Well, it's been a long night. Uh, brother Anthony, I really appreciate you joining here with me here and, and being willing to come on so late like this too. Um, so we want to get this out to the people. 
And I want to thank you for being with us tonight. Yes, uh, sir. Any, any closing comments? Yeah. Um, just one thing, you know, with everything that's going on in the, in the world and you know, the, the, the cause for uh, concern, you know, especially with the banking system and uh, with what's going on with the wars and rumors of wars and, you know, a lot of the weather uh, issues that we're having globally right now, especially if you live in California, uh, you guys are about to get slammed yet again. Um, earthquakes, it's, it, it, it can get very heavy. Uh, the concern and the worry, but I wanted to tell you guys tonight not to be fearful of these things and just remind everyone what Jesus's own words was when he was talking to the disciples in Matthew 24, when you see these things come, uh, it's an opportunity to do one thing and that's to look up and know that your redemption draw nigh. That means that Jesus is telling us focus on him and he's telling us to not worry about it, but in the right time, in the right season, and the right moment, he's going to come back, okay? And timing is very important to God, and only God knows the right and perfect timing for all things to happen. Until then, as a child of God, just know that God has already made provision for you. He knew the season you were going to be born in. He knew the things that you were going to be faced before the foundations were even laid. If he knows the numbers of hairs that are on your head, don't you think he knows how much food you're going to need to eat to sustain yourself for this whole life? Don't you think he knows uh, what kind of shelter you're going to need? Does he not, Do you not think that he doesn't have the provision already in place for you and the people in your life. And even those you may not have even met yet, they're going to come and aid you in the things that you need. And so just take, just take encouragement this evening. You know, when we see these things, we know that um, prophecy is being fulfilled, you know, and as it's being fulfilled, know that this is actually propelling us closer to the new kingdom that's to come. And that's the rule. That's the rule of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jehovah Nisi, he's coming. You know, Jehovah Rapha, he's coming. All right. And so uh, <clears throat> just be encouraged this evening. Fear not. You know, there's over, there's 365 scriptures in the Bible that talk about not to fear. That's yes. one for every day of the year. I don't think it's a coincidence that it's like that. And so it's God's telling us every single day, do not fear, do not worry. I got this. It's going to be okay. That is so true. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live with Brother Anthony from Daily Excellence. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe to his channel. And uh, we thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening. Bye, everyone.